We're going to find our place of reading this morning uh, in Genesis chapter number 12. And Brother Jack touched on this in the beginning of his Sunday school lesson this morning about Israel. And we want to uh, preach this morning. Uh, might be as much teaching as it is preaching, but we want to deal with the subject of Israel this morning. What does the Bible have to say about Israel? And so Genesis chapter number 12 is where we'll find our place of reading. And uh, ch- uh, verses 1, 2, and 3 will be where we'll jump off this morning and have several places where we'll read uh, today. And uh, I'm not going to ask you to stand today, but I will ask if you found your place, would you say amen? The Bible says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from my father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. Father in heaven, Lord, I pray today for discernment. God, like Solomon, who did not pray for riches or fame, but yet wisdom. And Father, I pray today you might help us, uh, God, to just rightly divide the word of truth. Uh, God, that we might be uh, not only hearers, but doers of the word. Uh, God, may you speak to us today. May you be the preacher. And we'll be grateful for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to preach this morning on this thought. What does the Bible have to say about Israel? Well, when we look at the scripture that I read to you here this morning in these three uh, passages of scripture, uh, 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 Sister Heather, there's at least maybe five things that we could write down that we extract from those verses. Uh, uh, We can make this decorative statement that uh, uh, God told Abram, he said, I will make of thee a great nation. He also said that he would make thy name great. Uh, Thirdly, he said, thou shalt be a blessing. And then fourth, he says, I will bless them that bless thee. And then he says in uh, uh, the latter portion of those scriptures, the fifth thing that is noted there, in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. And I believe that's a direct reference uh, uh, to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so uh, I've been thinking, uh, you know, a week ago yesterday, uh, Israel, the nation of Israel, that was reestablished in 1948, uh, uh, was attacked by Hamas. And uh, and so over the course of the past week, uh, we have witnessed many things, even here in our own country, uh, and some of them really, be honest with you, quite alarming about the attitude uh, of even the American people in this day in which we live. And so I want to preach uh, this morning, teach perhaps, on what does the Bible say about Israel. I, I mean, we look at the rise of hatred on college campuses uh, all across our nation. Uh, Pro-Palestinian protesters uh, decrying the nation of Israel and calling for the destruction of God's people. Uh, and uh, and uh, we see even some of our own congressional members, members of Congress, who refused to uh, denounce what happened uh, there last week, uh, refused to denounce Hamas. Uh, uh, we have high-profile entertainers, uh, athletes, and different ones that uh, are seemingly pro-Palestinian in their protest. Uh, and I read a, uh, a statistic. Now, this is from NPR, which is extremely liberal and said that in the year of 2021, just two years ago, that uh, the rise, uh, uh, the, the, the greatest number of anti-Semitic uh, uh, harassment or uh, uh, crimes were reported in 2021 since they've been create, uh, keeping records, in course. And so we've witnessed this past week rallies uh, in the Mideast, in Asia, in Europe, Rome, Berlin, New York City, Atlanta, Chicago, and Miami, and other places uh, where people are uh, uh, marching in the streets uh, and seemingly gleeful about what happened this past week to God's earthly elect. 
And so I thought that it would be remiss of me. I, I, I mean, even the United Nations has refused to label Hamas as a terrorist organization. And, and so I believe that you and I today, as fundamental Bible-believing Christians, uh, we want to be on the right side of history, uh, and we want to have a biblical attitude uh, about the nation of Israel. And I, I want to speak to this this morning. You pray for me that God would be my helper. Uh, may I say, first of all, uh, that the church, we live in the New Testament dispensation. Uh, I mean, if you're here today and you're saved, you're a part of the body of Christ. You're saved by the grace of God. Somebody said, what is the church? Uh, and I believe the church is a visible body of baptized believers uh, who have been saved by the grace of God, uh, united in their faith and belief of the Lord Jesus Christ, proclaiming the gospel of Christ till Jesus calls us home, uh, bringing glory to his name, uh, edifying the body of Christ, uh, and proclaiming the good news uh, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, the church, my friend, uh, is the pillar and ground of truth. And so today, no better place to come than to God's Word and to God's people to find out what God has to say about the events that affect not only my family, not only our city, but our nation. And so, uh, and so uh, over the course of the next few weeks and days to come, uh, you're going to be confronted with the issue uh, of what are we going to do with Israel. Now, and we want to be on the right side. And when I say the right side, uh, I'm not saying the popular side or, or even uh, uh, the side that seems most prosperous. Uh, we want to be on the Bible side of this issue. Uh, I want to remind us today that uh, the church does not replace Israel. Uh, and Israel does not replace the church. Uh, but one is God's earthly elect, uh, God's earthly chosen people, uh, and they're an earthly people uh, with earthly promises. Uh, but you and I today, as God's uh, spiritual elect, uh, are a chosen people uh, with spiritual promises. Uh, and so the church does not replace Israel, uh, but nor does Israel replace the church. Uh, uh, when, Nick, uh, when the Lord told Nicodemus, uh, he said, you must be born again. Uh, he was speaking to Jew. Uh, he was referring to Gentile, uh, uh, Muslim. Uh, uh, every person that's going to see God uh, is going to come through uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, because there's only one mediator between God and man. Uh, it's the man, Christ Jesus. Yeah, man. But notwithstanding, the church is the apple of the Lord's eye. And I believe that Israel is the apple. Of God the Father's eye. And he made promises them to them in the Old Testament that he will, will fulfill yet to come. And my friend, uh, we want to be on the right side of things. And so uh, there is a covenant people uh, and it is Israel. Oh, listen, my friend, I, I want to take you to the Bible now. You just pray for me that God will be my helper. I, I want to give you some Bible truth today. Uh, uh, we recognize that Abraham had two sons. Uh, one was uh, born uh, to him by Hagar, the bondwoman, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the, to Sarah, she, the Egyptian. Uh, and uh, he was born under the efforts uh, and the works and the designs of the flesh. Uh, and his name was Ishmael. Uh, and Abraham had another son. Uh, and he was, uh, uh, he was born, he was the son of promise. Uh, he was born to Abraham and Sarah by promise. Uh, uh, beyond any capability of Abraham and Sarah, beyond the years of conception, uh, beyond their earthly ability, uh, and God fulfilled a promise to Abraham in his son Isaac. And so today we want to look at this, and I want to remind you of some things. I want to say first, uh, I see the son of the bondwoman. Turn to me to Genesis chapter number 16. Genesis chapter number 16. And let's look at Verse 11, uh, 11 and 12. And we'll read that together. I, like I said today, we want to be on the right side of this subject. Uh, uh, we want our leaders to be on the right side of this issue. Uh, uh, the church needs to be on the right side of this issue. Uh, uh, we, need to, we need to be right about this matter concerning Israel. And so we look today at Genesis chapter number 16. 
We look at verse 11 and 12. Now there's, I, I'm trying to give you in just a, a, a sermon on Sunday morning, a thousands of years of history and a, a thousands of scriptures in the Bible. So God be my helper today. But I want to speak just for a little bit about the birth of Ishmael, that son that was born to Abram by the effort of the flesh. And the Bible tells us here in verse 11, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child. I'm speaking about Hagar. And she, and, and shalt bear a son and shalt call his name Ishmael. Uh, because the Lord hath heard thy affliction. And he, notice what the Bible says. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. Now, and so we have a declaration here uh, of the angel of the Lord says, uh, Hagar, uh, uh, you're going to have a son. Uh, uh, don't fear it. Uh, you're going to name him Ishmael. Uh, but you need to know something. Uh, he's going to be a wild man. Uh, uh, he, uh, his hand's going to be against that. He's going to be a, a violent man. And so uh, the scripture here, uh, but in chapter, and let's look at Genesis chapter 21, uh, verses 17 and 18. I told you this be as much teaching as it would preaching. Uh, but we will be on the right side of this issue today. Uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1 verse 17 and 18. Uh, and, the Bible's here, and the Bible says uh, uh, here. And God heard the voice of the lad. And the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said unto her. Why aileth thee Hagar fear not? For God hath heard the voice of the lad. Arise, lift up the lad, and hold him in thy hand, for I will make him a, a great nation. So we see that uh, uh, the Lord would make Ishmael a great nation. Uh, uh, we could go over to Genesis chapter 25. You can write it down. I'll not read that. But there, this, that promise that made in chapter 21 was fulfilled in Genesis 25. And there we find out that Ishmael, like Isaac, has 12 sons. Uh, uh, and so that promise was fulfilled. Uh, in Genesis 25. And so we can read on in the scriptures. Brother Darrell. We would find out that the descendants of Ishmael. Uh, uh, settled near the border of Egypt. Uh, in, in fact let's look at Genesis chapter 25 and verse 18. Are we doing okay today? We want to be on the right side of this thing. Amen. Uh, we want our leaders to be on the right side. Our congressmen and our president. Uh, when you see protesters in the street. And you watch the news at night. You don't want to be swayed by the popular politics of this day. You want to know what the Bible has to say about this issue. And so, listen, there's not one liberal bone in my body. I, hey, listen, I, I don't even have a liberal, I don't even have a liberal scab on my heart. I, hey, listen, I, I mean, I, there, I want to be Bible, and I want to be Bible correct. And the Bible says in Genesis 25 and verse 18, and they speaking about the descendants of Ishmael, and they dwelt from uh, uh, Avila unto Shur, that is, before Egypt, as thou goest toward Assyria. And he died in the presence of all his brethren. And so we see that Ishmael uh, settled in what we would probably call today the Arabian Peninsula. And it's pretty, uh, history would record this. Uh, even Muhammad the prophet said this uh, about himself. Uh, he considered the Isma himself to be a descendant of Ishmael, uh, and he considered all Arabs to be a descendant of Ishmael. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and they settled in the Arabian Peninsula. And you say, what does the word Arab mean? Well, brother Jason, it means nomad, uh, uh, nomads. And so they settled in the Arabian Peninsula. But not only did they settle in the Arabian Peninsula, but we also know that the sons of Keturah. Abram's wife after the death of Sarah, her son settled in that peninsula. And also uh, did the descendants of Esau, if I remember correctly, who also married an Egyptian. They settled in that Arabian peninsula. And so today, my friend, uh, that land, although maybe not entirely occupied by, is largely occupied by the descendants uh, of Ishmael. Uh, and so uh, uh, and so Arabs are... Uh, are referred to, I guess this is just my uh, Indiana way of saying it, but they're Muslims, uh, which means they are adherents to Islam. And so, and so uh, uh, the Islamic religion. And so, uh, uh, may I say today, Hamas is an acronym, just like a, 
we would have today, like uh, you know, CBS or ABC. It's an acronym, H-A-M-A-S. It's an Arabic acronym, and if it's translated to English, it means the Islamic resistance movement. And the sole purpose and the sole reason that Hamas and Hezbollah and all of those nations that uh, are, they're not even a nation, all of those terrorist organizations that border the land of Israel, they exist for one reason, and that's the complete destruction and the annihilation of God's earthly people. And I want to say to you today, let's go, are we doing okay today? You're going to be confronted with this in the days to come. Your grandchildren and children, your college students, the people you associate, your colleagues at work, they're going to try to, uh, they're going to, try to persuade you uh, by the liberal fad of the day. But I want you to know what the Bible has to say about this issue. Let's go back to our original reading in Genesis 12 just for a moment. Uh, uh, if I can find it here right quick. Uh, see, 12 comes after 11 before 13. And so, uh, now let's look at that. Now the Lord had said unto Abraham, Abram, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show thee. And so, of course, he's speaking of the promised land there. And I will make of thee a great nation. Of course, he's speaking of the nation of Israel there. And I will bless thee and make thy name great and thou shalt be a blessing. And so Abraham was a blessing. In fact, he's referred to today as the father of the household of faith. What's the Bible say about Abraham? He believed God in what? And it was accounted to him for righteousness. And so we see in verse 3, and here's where, my, here's where I'm at today. This is our message. This is important to you and I as American citizens who have, uh, uh, who have, uh, who have self-rule and the fact that we have elected representatives and we send our representatives to the city councils and to the mayor's office and to the state legislatures and all the way up the line. And how are we going to be on this issue today? Uh, of the nation of Israel. Well, here, Sister Sandy, is what the Bible has to say in very clear terms. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. Hey, listen, my friend. Uh, Israel rejected their Savior and Messiah 2,000 years ago. And they cried. They said, let his blood be upon us and our people. And it surely has these last 2,000 years, uh, they have suffered great affliction. Uh, they've been driven from their homelands uh, all around the world. The Holocaust, uh, what was it, maybe 6 million Jews. Uh, I had an uncle that, who's passed away uh, uh, who liberated uh, uh, some of the death camps there in Poland in World War II. Uh, and they have suffered atrocities. Uh, but they are, irregardless of what you and I think about it, uh, what you and I think about it, they are still God's chosen people. And when God says something, he means it. And God does not go back on his promises. And he said, I will bless them that bless thee, and I will curse him that curses thee. And so we want to be on the right side of this issue. I'm not preaching that the church replaces Israel. I'm not uh, preaching that Israel replaces church. Uh, nobody's saved because of their genealogy or their heritage. If you've been saved today, you're saved by the grace of God through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. But they are a covenant people. And it's important how we view them and how God views them. Are we doing okay today? Israel is God's chosen people. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 7. Verses 7, 8, and 9. I told you this would be more like teaching than preaching. But we want to be on the right side of this issue. And so we see here. Israel is God's chosen people, and I need to catch up with some of my notes as well. Okay, um, Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 through 8. And the scripture here says, have, we, have you found your spot? The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were in number uh, more than any uh, peoples, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep uh, the oath which he had sworn unto you, your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the land of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so we see here, my dear friend, 
uh, first of all, that we see that there's no question that Israel is God's chosen people. Uh, there in the Decalogue in Deuteronomy, the, uh, if you will, the, the second giving of the law to those who had come out of Egypt before they went into the land of promise, uh, uh, the Lord is very clear. He said, I did not choose you because you were uh, more in number than any other people. He said, you were the fewest of all people. He said, but because the Lord loved you uh, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, uh, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen from the, la from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And so we see here, uh, they are God's chosen people. I want to say today that uh, as we look at Israel, now in our scripture in verse 12, he said, in, in these shall all nations of the earth be blessed. And so he was not speaking about Ishmael. He was speaking about Isaac. One was born after the flesh. One was born after the, uh, the grace of God. And so let's look at Genesis chapter 15, verses 3 and 4. For just a moment. I'll give you a moment to turn there. We've looked at Ishmael. But let us now look at the son of promise. The son of promise. Now here we are. Abram speaking. And Abram said. Behold to me thou hast given no seed. And lo one born in my house. Is mine heir. And behold the word of the Lord came unto him saying. This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. And so we see here that God gave promise to Isaac, to Isaac and not Ishmael. And then he, in, in Genesis chapter 21, verse 12, I told you to be more like teaching. I'm happy to keep up my own notes. So God says that the one... He, in other words, he said, Eleazar is not going to be your heir. He said, one that's born to you is going to be your heir. So now the question becomes, is it Ishmael or is it Isaac? And Genesis chapter 21 and verse 12 is very clear about this. And God said unto Abraham, let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the lad and because of the bondwoman and all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice for in Israel... Shall thy seed, in Isaac, shall thy seed be called. And so the Bible is very clear here in Genesis 21 and 12 that Isaac was the son of promise. And so we could go on and take that a little bit farther this morning. And not only was Isaac the son of promise, but that promise was extended uh, uh, to Jacob also. And so, and not only to Jacob, but let us go to Genesis chapter number uh, 50 there to the end of the uh, to the end of the scriptures or that portion of the of the uh, of Genesis and let's see if we can find out here what he says let's look at verse 24 now here's the the death of Joseph so we see that Isaac was the son of promise now we look at Genesis chapter 50 and verse 24, and we find out that that promise extended not only from Abraham to Isaac, but also to Jacob and also to Jacob's descendants. Let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 50 and verse 24. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land unto the land which he swear to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you and shall carry up my bones from hence. And so we see today, my dear friend, uh, that the, the son of promise was Isaac. That covenant was extended to Jacob. And not only was there the son of promise, but there was also the promised land. I'm not going to go back and read all that, but God gave them a covenant land. And uh, may I say today that where Israel is at today, is just a sliver of a portion of the land that was promised uh, to Israel. They're occupying just a small portion. Uh, and that, that, that nation was created in 1948. And every president since Truman has supported Israel. And this nation 
has stood behind Israel and we have been a defender of Israel. And I believe that one of the reasons why God has blessed our nation like he has is for a couple of reasons. I believe, number one, because we have we have preached the gospel around the world uh, more than any other nation. I, uh, this country has been a mission minded nation. But not only that, but I believe God has blessed this nation more importantly I, because we have we stood by Israel and we have defended Israel. And really today in the world court, the only thing that stands between Israel and its total annihilation in terms of political and geopolit geopolicies is the United States. Now we know that God is the protector and God will protect them. But I want to say, you say, so what's going to happen? Well, let's look at Romans chapter 11, verse 25. Not only was there the promised son, but there was the promised land. Not only was there the promised land, but when, uh, but when the people of God rejected their Savior, my, 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 they were blinded. And right now they are blinded as a nation. But the promise will be resumed. Let's look at Romans chapter 11 and verse 25. Are we there yet? For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery. Now Paul's writing here to the church. Lest you should be wise in your own conceits. That blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written. There shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. As concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sake. Little f. And you say, what are you saying, preacher? I I'm saying that uh, they rejected Christ and because of that, you and I were grafted into the body of Christ. Uh, hey, listen, uh, uh, be before that, we were just but mere dogs. Uh, uh, we were outcasts. We were aliens. Uh, uh, Ephesians, hey, in the body of Christ, there is no, neither Jew nor Gentile, but all one in Christ Jesus. Uh, but my friend, one of these days, God is going to take the blinders off of Israel. Uh, uh, they're going to see the Lord Jesus Christ for who he was. Uh, he's going to reveal himself to them uh, uh, as their Messiah. They don't see it today, but they will see it. And I believe with all my heart, my friend, Israel is a time clock for the things that's going on in the economy of God. Uh, and I, I, I don't think the church will be here to see that. I believe that we'll be taken out of here. But God is going to deal with his people again in the tribulation. Uh, and we want to be on the right side of this issue regarding Israel. They are God's covenant people. And God has not forsaken them. He has not cast them out. He will deal with them again. In fact, you go to Zechariah chapter 14. I think I'm going to come to a close right here. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 4. Are we doing okay today? Let's go to Zechariah chapter 14. I think we stand on the grand stage today of things that will happen in the days to come. And so, in Zechariah chapter 14, let's look at verse number 1. I'll read down there a few verses of Scripture. Zechariah chapter 1. He says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. And what's he say? For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle. And the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the well glory. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountains shall remove toward the north and half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains. For the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Ye shall flee like as ye fled before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. 
and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. God's going to deal with his people again. And my friend, it's going to happen in the kingdom age. And we want to be on the right side. of the, Yes, we are the church of the living God. We are the church of Christ. And we are to proclaim the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. All men must be born again. And, and uh, But we know there's coming a day when God's going to take the blinders off Israel. And he's going to deal with his covenant people again. And he said in Genesis, I will bless them that bless thee. And I will curse him that curseth thee. I want to read one passage of scripture to you and I'm coming to a close today. Let's look at Revelation chapter number one today. Are we doing okay? Let's look at Revelation chapter one. Now we know someone said, when's the Lord coming back? Well, the Bible says in the hour that you think not. I believe he'll appear, appear in the clouds of glory. He's going to receive us unto himself. But my friend, his appearing and his coming are two different things. And notice uh, what the Bible has to say here in Revelation chapter number 1. Let's look at verse uh, verse 7. Now his appearing, he comes, he, he appears as a thief in the night, in the hour that you think not. But here in Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, the Bible says, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every, every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well because of him. Even so, amen. They're going to see him for who he was. They're going to realize that he was in fact the Messiah. The one who came as their rightful king. Who came and died at no rugged cross for their sin. And my friend, we won't be on the right side of this. When we see, when we see things happening across our land and country today, we recognize that a man must be born again whether he's Jew, Gentile, or whatever he is. But we want to be on the right side of this issue with God's covenant people. They are God's chosen people. And they will occupy the land of promise that God said they would occupy. And all nations will come against them. And we see that happening right now. They would drive them to the ocean if they could. And we're watching it unfold before our very eyes. I want to be on the right side of this subject, don't you?